So we're talking about uh, uh, the factors in the environment, and uh, I told you that fog, frost, snow is not here, but unfortunately we do have the fog, the ones I told you. And then traffic density was the speed of vehicle. Number of accidents, two number of vehicles having second factor as speed. Okay, just take the example. God forbid if the accident takes place in our vicinity, that means if a vehicle is coming from the host or college, another from uh, college to the hostels, the chances of this accident being serious are low because the speed is not that much. Compare it with the road which goes from Narwal to Muritke and then compare it with the motorway. So less is the number of vehicles and more is the speed which leads to more accidents and more severe accidents. In low speed areas, more than number of vehicles, load is the speed like in small streets, in the gullies, in the small roads. If in these cases the number of vehicles becomes less, the speed becomes more. No problem. Jada gariya, choti jaga, speed kam. Choti jaga, kam gariya, speed jada. So again, the chances would be more of accidents. What is the A cube which is safe? 35 to 60 years. Mature people. Hosh zyada, josh kam. No other consequences. Drive carefully. So the chance of accidents are less. Risk group, 20 to 35 years, ah, energetic. Youth, hosh, 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 no josh at all. And 6 to 80 years, because in this age, they start having disabilities. The reaction time slows down. There are problems with vision. The issues of the hearing and oral reflexes, they decrease. Number of accidents, sex, oh, this is a known entity. But generally, women are more safe drivers. In most of the ambulances of uh, uh, Europe, the drivers are female. Personality trait, extrovert, bold, stronger, risk-taking group, the chance of access are more. Introvert, timid, no risk-taking, people like us, safe group, me. <laughs> okay? Distraction on the side of the road. Many a time they say that the world louder than the action. Here I say that the picture speaks louder than the words. Good curls on the left, distracting accidents. Big signboards, light boards, some music activity going on the side of the road. So these are the distractors of the attention of a driver and of course they are auditory and visual and the chances of accidents are more. Now classific road tra uh, traffic accidents, they are number of vehicles involved, of course there will be a single vehicle, two vehicle, multiple collisions. If you have ever seen the accidents taking place on the main highways of the European countries, after a snowstorm, there are multiple collisions and you can appreciate 10, 20, 30 vehicles collide together. Even such scenes are uh, you may be seen on our canal and I have lately seen at least 4 to 5 vehicles being uh, stuck to each other. Direction of impact. The direction of impact is going to tell you the type of injuries and we'll talk about that moment of motive of accident. What is the motive? Medical legal. True accident? Fair enough. Or it is accident to cause homicide. The suicides have been done. We just throwing a person in front of a railway 
uh, I mean the strains of the vehicles and extent of damage to the injured. The single vehicle can be involved and more than one vehicle can be involved. Tick. Direction of impact. You can have frontal impact, head on, lateral impact from the side and rear impact. Motive accident, crash without a motor and most commonly it is intoxicated. Now these are the accidents where there is some issue either in the vehicle, breaking of the tie rod, bursting of the tire, the person is intoxicated, fatigued, had a, a severe a, a panic attack, had a chest infection, Oh, sorry, a chest pain, pancreatitis, so and so forth. Or you were distracted by the environment. For the motorway is closed, but many times there is fog, they loud, and the person is driving very high speed in their occasion. So they're without motive, and then crash with motives. <coughs> so homicides have been done. The people have been crushed with a vehicle and trying to simulate suicide. Here I would like to uh, uh, tell you about an incident and that is an accident took place and a person was killed. The terror was caught, the vehicle was taken to custody of the police and the investigation was done. The person was okay, healthy, not having any hearing deficit, vision was okay, no congenital acquired anomaly, no colicky pain anywhere. The vehicle was perfect, he and the, and the driver was not at all under the effect of alcohol, etc. He said, okay, I'm fair enough, I don't have any issue. But the issue was in the peristian, he was a case of migraine infarction, and while he was crossing, in front of the vehicle, he met migraine ischemia, heart got arrested, and he went unconscious and stuck against the vehicle and died. The message which I want to convey by this story is that the investigation of a road traffic accidents many times may be a very, very tedious job. You may have to look it into a lot many details. Now, extent of damage to the injured person. Minor injuries, simple sprain, simple bruise and abrasion, might be having simulations. Victim is not hospitalized. There is no need of hospitalization. He might have gone in the hospital for maybe a couple of hours, maybe to get stitches. But the hospitalization is not required. Moderate. Serious injuries, big lacerations, big sprain, <laughs> small fracture. Person might have to be kept under observation. A message here. Slightest of the unconsciousness after accident, slightest of the bleeding from the ears slightest of the thick relatively uh, sort of uh, water discharge from the nose the person must be kept in the hospital must be kept in the hospital for observation because the breathing from the ear can be a case of fracture of the cranium the middle cranial fossa slightest of the unconsciousness concussion and later on interacting with bleed and the thing coming out from the nose may be the CSF because of the fracture of the clip of plate of ethmoid bone and uh, injury to the frontal bone of the brain. So these cases are to be kept under observation in the hospital. Severe injuries which are enriching life and need hospitalization more than one week. Head injuries, fractures, injury to the lungs, spinal fracture, liver, mesenteric vessels. 
common entities in rotor effect extents and other extents. So, severe injuries and then fatal injuries. Many times the person dies either at the spot or in the hospital and usually in 30 days. Within 30 days, usually they die in a shorter period. What is reaction time? <laughs> very important. And reaction times play a very important, very pivotal role during accidents. So what is it? It means the time from the moment when a person sees a cause for action. Cause for action, please underline. Through the mental process of decision, what action needs to be taken? And to the first operative moment, I explain. I am driving. I see a dog has come in front of my car. I see the message go to the brain, perceive, motor messages come and what I will do? I will decelerate the vehicle and put on the brake slowly. Please, a message here. Never ever apply the brakes immediately. Never ever apply the brakes immediately. Decelerate the car first. Let the speed come down slowly and then the brake. So time which is taken by me from seeing the dog <coughs> to putting my, uh, taking my feet <laughs> away from the accelerator and putting the brake is known as reaction time. What the idea? Very good. Normal reaction time is 0.3 seconds and of course it's for a distance of 12 feet. Traveling at 30 miles, or you can convert it into kilometers per hour. And it takes about 13.2 feet for the action to alter the action of speed of the... Now, please, a message here. Now, you see, if the speed is good, speed in the limits, so there are all chances that the reaction time will save you from a big disaster. So, message is that always always obey the speed limits which are there and now even on the canal even on the small roads of flower and i think on the many cities the speed limits are there and now <laughs> the speed limits are demarcated are highlighted are made after knowing the all the environmental factors the vehicle the driver and reaction time victims in road accidents now What are the victims? Just see. <laughs> it is pedestrian. I can prolong this list. Now he can be a pedestrian. He can be a, a, a occupant and uh, so occupant front seat pay both are driver and others and of course on the back seat. Next slide is very important, please. Next slide is very important and I'm sorry uh, for the relatively uh, not writing perfectly, but please bear with me. So I I request you to please concentrate on the next slides. In whatever the uh, the correction I made, please did it. Now, <coughs> single vehicle. The next one up. This again depends upon that the vehicle is two wheeler or four wheeler. So the two wheeler in Pakistan are cycles, bicycles, motorcycles, and scooters. In four wheeler. The four wheeler are your cars, and the jeeps, and the buses, and um, the trucks, etc. They have many, many wheels. So, what happens in the case of two wheelers like bikes? The more dangerous. Why? They are less stable, small in size, weight is less, do not remain upright on impact, and person is always thrown off. So, why have a question? Why the two wheelers accidents are more dangerous? Reply would be, sir, there is less stability, they are small in size, the weight is less, they do not remain upright they fall either on the right or left and person in 
is always thrown off and many a times once he is thrown off from these two wheelers he is going to strike another vehicle which was passing by. I will never forget the death of one of my very dear ones. He was going on a motorbike. The motorcycle slipped. He got a bit disturbed. There's always a bit of shock. So once he got up, he was supposed to go on the left, but he just moved few steps on the right and he was crushed by a very speedy car. So when the person is thrown off, he might not have sustained severe injuries because of being thrown off but because of the other vehicle which is going at a very high speed close to the immediate vicinity. He may have fatal injuries. Primary impact injuries in the case of bikes, primary impact, first impact. They are most likely open fractures of tibia and fibula and beta. There are close fractures, close fractures also there. The close fractures and the open fractures. The close fracture means that <laughs> the overlying skin, overlying muscles, overlying fat, subcutaneous tissues are intact and the fracture is there. So they are called close fracture. And open fracture is when <laughs> you can see the fractured bone. Okay? So there is tearing of the skin, muscles, fat, etc., etc. Okay, <laughs> so then we will study the fracture at a later stage of uh, our academic session. Secondary injuries, there are also most likely fractures, and here they are of the very special areas, which are matter of concern. And these injuries can prove either dangerous or fatal. And what are the organs involved? Skull, cervical spine, leading to the, uh, the concussion, the, the contusions, fractures of the skull, rest of brains, hematoma. Very dangerous, very dangerous. Scared my crazes. When I was teaching you traumatology, I told you that multiple grazes on the thigh and I also showed you the slide are known as brush buns. Brush buns. So if someone asks you what are brush buns, your reply would be sir they are multiple grazes on a spread area on any part of the body usually on the thighs occurring in road traffic accidents these are known as brush buns. And of course, once you have <laughs> these big grazes and big abrasions, there is a, a, a tagging of the skin and uh, if you see it, you can really appreciate it. Again, I want to highlight. Very important aid for the examination of the injuries and wounds is magnifying lens. Magnifying lens, Supita. Whenever you want to see the details of an injury, please never ever hesitate to use the magnifying lens. Pedestrian. <laughs> now this is the slide I was talking about. This was the slide I was talking about. So please make correction. A. Primary impact. So write impact injuries. Please write impact injuries. And then B, it is not secondary impact, right? Secondary injuries. Clear? I repeat. A, delete primary impact injuries. In B, delete impact secondary injuries. Clear? Now, what are the primary impact injuries? <laughs> primary impact injuries are the injuries which are sustained by the pedestrian when he or she is hit for the first time with a vehicle. Now, he is stuck by a bumper or bonnet of the, the, uh, the vehicle. And this hitting many times causes a special fracture on the tibia and fibula which is known as bumper fracture. It is a triangular and wedge shape. Clear? I want to highlight 
a very important point here that the bumper fracture or the bumper injuries they depend on the height of the person if the person is of a normal height fair enough the bumper injuries or the bumper fracture would definitely be on the tibia and fibula but in the case a person is having less height is a dwarf is a child this bumper injuries can be on the chest can be on the abdomen and even can be on the head in the case of small boy clear so if a question comes do you always have a bumper injury on the tibia and fibula no sir usually they are there if the height of person normal but if it is a dwarf if it is a child height is less so bumper injuries can be found on the abdomen and chest the concept is that the bumper the bonnet injuries are those injuries which are caused on the victim uh, from bumper and <coughs> bonnet now this depends <coughs> sorry <coughs> whether feet are fixed standing feet are sliding he is walking he is walking so once he is walking he is a less support one foot may be above other on the ground and then slide aside and back the feet sliding forward now i was talking about i was talking about injuries on the pedestrian no beta again i repeat impact injuries impact injuries are whenever the pedestrian is going to strike the vehicle so the primary impact can be in the form of bumper injuries now the secondary impact is once he is being rolled up and he strikes uh, strikes the screen again the touch impact would be when he touches the the roof and quarterly impact will be when he comes on the diggy and then falls down so as long as he is having impact with the vehicle the injuries will be primary impact secondary impact tertiary impact and so on and so forth the concept of impact that he has to be in touch he has to be in contact with the initial vehicle then it at the secondary injuries the secondary injuries are due to road now after striking the vehicle once twice many times he goes to the road and he sustains secondary injuries please delete the word impact here please delete the word impact here and tertiary injuries tertiary injuries are when he has fallen on the road he is dragging on the inertia on the uh, the movement which has been sustained by his body or he might have been run over it is not an order it is a run over by the other vehicle and he will be having crushing injuries so now what are these injuries and what are different forms now these injuries they vary from simple bruises abrasion fractures laceration to the severest of the injuries that is a head injury now all this complex and and until the till the crushing injury when he has been overrun by another vehicle so if someone asks you that what is the origin of the injuries sustained by the pedestrian the answer would be he may have slightest of the injuries if the speed of the vehicle is less bumper strikes he falls down in the front bruises are there maximum fracture but if the speed is more he is unstable he will all go rolling over the vehicle as a slide will show we have the pictures and then once he falls on the down he has a, a, a second injuries and then touch injuries and run over so the diversity is a maximum in such cases i repeat starting so 
once they want to ask you what are the injuries so you have to tell the injuries of course in primary impact and you will say okay sir he can have bruises he can have, have abrasions laceration bumper fractures so and so forth just writing prime impact injury is not sufficient so you have to give the type of injury which is sustained by the pedestrian so meaning thereby that all these injuries whether the primary impact secondary tertiary impact injuries to impact injury and impact injury is once is thrown off from the vehicle on the road and then the she so this is all the diversity in the type of injuries which are sustained by a pedestrian now mechanics frontal impact now we are talking about the mechanics we have talked about the pedestrian and now the mechanics which are involved in the injury of the overall involvement uh, they are the Uh, the pedestrian and they are the occupants of the vehicle, the driver and uh, the front seat occupant and the back seat occupant. So, in the frontal impact, we have uh, pedestrians, we have occupants, lateral impacts, we have occupants mostly, and rear impact, of course, we have pedestrian and occupants. So, in the case of rear impact, you can have the 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 pedestrian obviously striking from behind. Now. Injuries to the occupants of the vehicle. Now, now we are just restricting ourselves to a cabin, to a place, to an isolated place. Okay. So here we will have non-ejection injuries. So meaning thereby that once a person is inside the vehicle, he can be a driver, he can be a front seat occupant. He can be back seat, uh, back seat occupant, and in the case of lorries and buses, there can be thirty-five to forty passengers. Okay, there can be thirty-five to forty passengers. So as long as they are inside the vehicle, inside the car, inside the bus, inside the lorry, they will have non-ejection injuries. Okay, and once they are thrown off, the door gets open. The, the the vehicle gets startled, and so what happens? That they go out. So the injuries which they will be sustaining now are known as ejection injuries. Okay. Now, so non-ejection and ejection injuries. Clear. So now we move on to non-ejection. So non-ejection injuries are all those injuries which are going to be sustained by the victim once they stay. Inside the vehicle, and and the example we take here is that of a car. Now, what happens? <laughs> Just take the example of a car. Think of a car, and you have a driver, you have a front seat occupant, and you have the back seat passengers or back seat occupants. Front seat driver, now injured the driver. Just please do one thing. Most of you must be uh, in your houses. Go out and sit in the car of daddy, brother, mama. Place yourself on the driving seat and just think that what are the articles, what are the accessories, what are the equipments, what are the uh, what are uh, all those gadgets which are around you. And now you can appreciate that just in front of you is steering. Then you have a dashboard. Then. You have a windscreen, then you have a door handle, clear, and then, then look at yourself. <laughs> Your body part consists of face, scalp, chin, chest, and legs. Okay, done. Now think what happens if during the accident the screen. Breaks usually what used to happen in good old day, days that the screen was of a glass or used to get broken into small pieces, and those small pieces used to strike the face of the person, causing minute, minor, multiple lacerations, and the lacerations were simulating; it were <laughs> resembling as if. The face has been attacked by the claws of the bird. Okay, here just uh, on the lighter note, 
please try to see the uh, the movie birds so there are multiple lacerations are brain on the face because of the breaking of this uh, pieces of glass of screen so this was known as or uh, this is known as bird claw injury or bird foot claw injuries so there can be note on that <coughs> so what is a bird foot claw injury so your answer would be sir these are the injuries sustained by driver once he is driving and the screen gets broken multiple small pieces strike the face abrasions and lacerations multiple span the face looks like as if they have been bitten they have been attacked by the claws of bird so these are known as bird claw injury or bird foot claw injury so same can be found on the <laughs> scalp and chin dashboard injury is simple no before dashboard injuries come to the steering wheel injury very very important no in the good good old vehicles there was no concept of air balloons so once there was an accident the chest used to strike against the steering and very dangerous very serious injury used to be the steering wheel injuries you could you could feel the center of uh, the imprint abrasions in the center of the chest and of course and many a time there just be a fracture this location of the sternum and ribs and uh, the f the fracture uh, the broken ends of the ribs going in damage the liver pericardium and the heart in person used to die but now safety my guess remember go to the second third slide so what ultimately we're going to get make recommendation is safety measures so now because the safety measures we have the air balloon and when there is a sudden deceleration air balloons come out and that become a really a really a big support between life and death and now it is in a good vehicle the steering wheel injuries are not there dashboard injuries dash in front of them you and the different parts of the body can strike and you can have bruises of the deceleration coming to the hands fracture of hips suddenly you put a force on the steering and the chances of fracture the radius and now and same goes to the uh, uh, the bones of the lower limbs and the chance of fracture of the foot part of it so now see now here now a question is there four victims of road traffic accidents have come to you for a topsy how will you identify the body of a driver so the body of a driver will have bird foot claw injury will have steering wheel injury will have uh, injury to the uh, the bones of the wrist and uh, etc and while applying the brakes and applying his feet trying to save himself he might be having the injuries of the lower limbs close to feet again i want to highlight another injury which i may be telling you later on but that is known as i think that may be there in the next slide let me oh yes it is there so non driver <laughs> you will have the face cap injuries striking the dashboard and of course of the screen it will be chair injuries or whiplash injury now whiplash injuries are also known as clasp knife injuries so please make it a point the whiplash injuries are also known as clasp knife injuries what is the area area is cervical spine how it happens multiple collision hyper extension hyper flexion hyper extension hyper flexion hyper flexion hyper extension so multiple collision multiple sudden hyper extension and hyper flexion injury to the spinal cord varying from simple concussion to the fracture of the cervical vertebra and laceration of the spinal cord so the whiplash injuries are uh, the clasp knife injuries are very very important road traffic accidents i repeat these are the injuries on the 
सर्वाइकल रीजन ऑफ द बॉडी इन मल्टीपल मल्टीपल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बेटा मल्टीपल कोलिजन मल्टीपल सडन जर्की मूवमेंट्स इन दम ऑफ हाइपर एक्सटेंशन हाइपर फ्लेक्शन एंड इट लीड्स टू कंकशन फ्रैक्चर एंड लेस स्पाइन कॉड एंड इवन इट कैन लीड टू डेथ बेक्सिट पैसेंजर्स दे विल नॉट बी हैविंग विंड स्किन इंजरीज दे डोंट हैव अ डैशबोर्ड get in your from door structure projecting object and usually 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 if they are applying a seat belt so they are safe and they might be having a certain injuries by striking the head against the front seat and usually the the back of the front seats are usually soft and loaded with all the soft material and the injuries are the severe injuries are less likely to take place so the rear impact acts accelerates the vehicle and injuries to neck lumbar region and hip region now rear impact what happens you are going at a normal speed and certainly very high speed vehicle strikes now it accelerates your vehicle and injuries to the neck lumbar region and hey, please 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 note it down these injuries are not minor these injuries are not minor and unfortunately these injuries are not at all because of the the, the person who has become victim here he has been the victim of of a vehicle who is coming right from behind he, he might not be obeying the rules and regulation he might be coming at a very high speed and he has hit and the result is many a times very severe injuries to the neck and neck means cervical uh, spine and vertebrae and lumbar region mean lumbar region and the people have gone paralyzed very very unfortunate lateral impact middle parts of body involved and main injuries are the crash injuries again severe injuries ejection injuries secondary injuries due to run over dragon so ejection injuries are now the person or the occupants who were inside a cabin it relatively a secured place have been thrown out have come out the doors have opened and they have come out now they are going to have secondary injuries and they vary and this is unfortunate if they are run over by a very speedy vehicle who is coming from behind so from this from the slight injuries to the dragging injuries and the run over injuries are found after the persons have got ejected from the vehicle now this is a slide of road traffic accident and of course this is going to tell you an idea uh, on the basis of uh, direction of impact your front rear and extent of damage you have minimum moderate severe fatal and uh, motive obviously as i told you uh, they are uh, the if the person is intoxicated or having any a sheer colic pain i mean these uh, this is when um, uh, it doesn't have any motive motive and accident is so accident other is the involvement uh, as, as homicide and the suicide and the number of vehicles involved we have uh, talked about it now here is summary of the pedestrian injuries and <laughs> we have the primary impact again primary impact of course this primary impact it can be secondary impact it can be tertiary impact and then we have secondary injuries tertiary and run over injuries i have talked about uh, them in quite many details and again i can repeat it here because it is my strong conviction <laughs> that to memorize repeat 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 and repeat so primary impact injury is the first time when the pedestrian has come in contact with the vehicle the second impact <laughs> when he has come for the second time then touch impact second injury is one he goes on the road and <laughs> then touch the injuries are dragging or run over in his thanks god he is the run over in his return rightly so this is summary of the the pedestrian and now again very important here i repeat it is not necessary that you have primary impact injuries you have to elaborate what are the primary impact injuries you have to okay sir they can be in the form of bruises they can be in the form of abrasions so they can be in the form of laceration oh sir they can be bumper fractures and so bumper fracture is usually in a person who has a normal height is on tibia fibula so it's a wedge shape it's a wedge shape 
Master, please keep in mind that, that if he is a small boy, the height is less, then the bumper injuries can be anywhere, it can be on the hip region, it can be thorax. If a small, it's a small child, maybe two and a half feet or so, it can be on the head. So, again, second injuries in the Tashi, I have told you in details. Okay? Happy?